Let's do it. Block four, peek into boutique. The party starts right now. That's right, everybody. I'm Rob Appel from Michael Miller Fabrics. Welcome to Making It Fun. If you've been following along for a while, welcome back to our peek into batik, our sew along with these wonderful batiks in the jet black from Michael Miller Fabrics. If you haven't been following along, hey, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. What we have for all of you is we have the cutting instructions, sewing instructions uh, set up for both the patchwork like we're going to do right here today on the set. I'm going to walk you through those, but we've also partnered with AccuQuilt. And so we have the cutting instructions uh, for them using their wonderful block system, which is fabulous. And I have a couple of videos back. I put out block number two where I snuck over to Mel Beach's home and she walked us through how to use that wonderful cutting system. Super accurate, super fast, super easy. But we are still here being safe in our homes. I'm in my studio and I'm gonna walk you through the easy patchwork for this fabulous um, block. Now, as a reminder, the fun thing about blocks like this and this particular block of the month, sew along, all of the blocks will finish the same size. And as you look over here on the wall, over here on the design wall, you can actually see that the blocks will finish not only the same size, but the framework around the outside edges are the same. So you could make a quilt starting today with just this block or now all four blocks and play with it. You could do different edgings, different sashing. So it's really, really fun. And again, as always, super simple, super easy. But because I love my basics from Michael Miller Fabrics, I am using my beautiful hash dots, the blue, the gold, the green. I don't even think I said those colors right. Don't make me go back and edit that, please. Our jet black and then our wonderful marble that we use on the outside edges. Let's just take these one piece or pieces at a time. The math and the cuts are super easy today. So we're going to start with three inch squares. We're going to need four of them. So basically one from each of our center fabrics. I need you to go ahead and take and draw a diagonal line across just the blue and the green. And we're going to marry together right sides together to make a couple of half square triangles out of each of these two to be exact. The blue to the black and the green to the gold, just like this. And then you're gonna go on over to your sewing machine. And if you haven't seen this trick ever before, I'm actually gonna use my edge guide on that little drawn line I did with a Sharpie marker. You could use a pencil, a chalk, whatever you like. But now as we sew through, I'm just using that line on my edge guide. And as I'm doing this, I'm creating one half square triangle with a quarter inch seam allowance on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and pivot, rotate, bring my fabric all the way around and just start right on the other side. Kind of a form of chain piecing. All the way to the end. So that's the blue and the black. We're gonna do the same to the green and the gold. And now let's do a good safe practice and uh, be wise. And we're gonna use a um, ruler here to keep our hands safe. The only person that needs to be in a hurry today would be me. And that's just to keep this video in a nice timely format. So again, just splitting these half square triangles, come into a nice hot iron. And we're just gonna press these right over to the dark sides by holding that dark piece of fabric up in the air. Now, as we get ready to build the center of the block using those four half square triangles, let's just start with our gold and our green pieces. And we're gonna basically take them and we're gonna set them together. And at the moment, I'm kind of looking at them on point, but the two gold tips are touching each other like this. Now what I wanna do is form a line going across the middle using the blue and the black, but the blue and the black are gonna be on opposite sides like that there. So once you make sure they match up and do double check your pattern to make sure you have them correct, then you can just rotate them back to the way that they're going to go through the machine, match up the two edges, and then we're just gonna go ahead and sew the two sets of the half square triangles together now.
and you can technically do them at the same time. Kind of chain piecing style like this. But it's always wise to take a moment and press after every step, really. So what I want to do is I want to press now over towards that gold, uh, black and blue square, half square triangle. And I'll do the same on the other unit. So that way it'll cause the seams on the back side to be going in opposite directions very, very nicely. Let's make sure we get these lined up correctly, though. There we go. So the golds are touching again. Make sure of that. Then just go ahead and line up that center seam as we get ready to come back over to the machine. And now we have the center of the center block. Patrick's looking fabulous so far. So we've got this built here now. Now what we're gonna go do is we're gonna jump into the next units, the next portions of the perimeter. And for that, we're gonna need four of these rectangles and these are two and a half by four and a half. There's four of them of the green fabrics. Now these squares are all two and a half inch squares. The blue ones we're just gonna set aside. Those are gonna be cornerstones in a moment. The gold ones, and the black ones, again, we're going to draw, draw diagonal lines, but this time that's going to be the actual sewing line. And we're going to do these two at a time because we need opposite angles. So let's slow down and take these just two at a time. I'm going to take one of these green rectangles and I'm going to start by taking a gold unit here and I'm going to sew it on in this direction. And as I get onto the machine, again, as I drop this presser foot, notice that the needle is now following right down that drawn line mark all the way from corner to corner. Then you can go ahead and just take this back out. Use your ruler again just to keep your hand safe. Trim off quarter inch seam allowance. Set those aside on the floor for later. And you do need to press this one over. And I say that because I was going, as I always do, join the tips, but we're not joining the tips today. We're going to join now another direction. So we're basically going to sew parallel lines here. So now just making sure that my lines are running parallel, I'm going to go ahead with a black square on the green and I'm going to sew down here. And this time I used a chalk pencil on my wonderful jet black so I could see it. Come on out of there. Once again, we're just going to trim it and press it. And you will need to make one more of those, but the other two are going to be opposite. So let's just do one more of the opposites now to ensure you know what it looks like. And in order to do that, the easiest way really is, is going to go ahead here. Think about this. Fold this back right now, the gold one, right? Bring your gold one back over. And if I lay it here and the lines are going in the same direction, that's going to be the same direction. So let's rotate that 180 degrees. So now these kind of come into form this point as you're looking at them. And the reason I flipped this first one over is so it was right sides together. So I really had a visual interpretation this way. So at any rate, now we're going to sew this line in this direction. Still sewing on the drawn line. Now that we have this, take a moment, press it, because it's always a good habit. And then again, line up your black square so that the lines are running parallel in the same direction. Stitch that on.
And why don't you make two more of each as well while I'm making mine and I'll meet you right back and we'll put the outside star border on. Quick note from the editor and Mike going into the next section of the video. Rob makes a mistake and we want to point out really quickly that you're going to want your green and your gold lines running parallel as you start building the next block. Rob doesn't figure it out until a little too late. I know, sorry, I jumped light years ahead. We haven't even put this part together around the center. So let's slow down back to the center overhead camera. We're gonna grab our center pieces and we're gonna continue this wonderful green line we started off of the corner here with these new units. So that is gonna go in and we're gonna be able to rotate these bad boys on the edges here to follow this green line. And it's kind of a fun little puzzle while well, you twist it and you play with it. But you can see as the green follows through top and bottom and then these other blue two and a half inch squares as I was referring to earlier are gonna go ahead and be our cornerstones. So the easiest way to now assemble this really is to grab one of the rectangles, let's call it the bottom one, and sew on these two blue squares, one to either side. And in this case, even though it's good to iron after each step because it's not affecting the other side, you can technically throw one on, throw the other on this side here, and then head on over to the ironing board. We're gonna press these ones towards the little squares. So away from the rectangles. Make sure you put it back in the right position, in the right orientation. And as those two pieces are in place, now we're just gonna set them there and we're gonna sew these other shorter sides onto the center block itself. And yes, I'm not gonna go to the iron yet, but I am gonna bring this back in here physically and make sure I have it in the right orientation so that I don't make any boo-boos here. And now I'm gonna put it back on. I have found sometimes the faster I go, the sewer I slow. <laughs> but I'm getting a lot of that reverse uh, sewing practice in, a lot of frog stitching, rip it, rip it, rip it. Okay. Pressing these now out towards the, oops, I wanna press these ones, excuse me, in towards the center square to make that Union as we're going to put on those other pieces a little easier. We're just going to press those in towards the center square. And then I'm going to grab them, double checking, making sure everything's lining up. And I think what I need to do here is double check the pattern to make sure I'm supposed to have two golds on one side. Nope, I've done something incorrectly again here. So I got to rotate this. I got careless. I was just telling you all to go slower so you wouldn't have this issue and I just did the same thing. We won't edit this one out this week. This is fun. I believe that my solution is, remember, we're just looking to get all the gold pieces to line up. This one's built. There's this gold piece here, but this unit's got to spin 180. So we're just going to flip this over. And if you haven't seen my tips on seam ripping before, and like I said, I've been getting a lot of practice in, I'm going to go ahead and press it back to the right sides together. It just kind of makes it so it's easier for me to not just uh, make errors. I like to kind of get in here, pop a few stitches from the inside. Oh, drop my little ripper in there. Then just take a minute and press everything again because you're gonna be working in those areas again. Okay, now let's see if I was correct. Okay, so now I've got my one, two, three gold on this side and I was just hoping if I rotated it, oh yeah. 
No problem, because now my green still lines up and my gold pieces will still be on the same side as well. I'm just double checking to make sure my greens and my golds are in alignment. Now I can just flip it and stitch it here. Now we'll press these open before we can add on that outside star border. And that outside star border is the same I've been showing you in the other videos, but we'll walk you through it again here in just one second. So there it is. We have our center back together. Perfect. I'm excited. Now we're going to pull out our next series of fabrics. That was that marble. And these are going to be four and a half inch squares. And I need eight of these. I need four of the jet black, four and a half inch squares. And then I also need four of the jet black rectangles that are eight and a half by four and a half, because we're going to go ahead as I've drawn diagonal lines on the back of all of the eight of these marble squares. We're basically going to build some snowballed on, um, triangle points. So I'm going to start just like we did with those little pieces a moment ago. This one though, for sure, we have to sew down one side all the way through, sewing on the drawn line. Now I've been saving this fall off piece because I've made a lot of these and I'm starting to build them up and they'll actually make into something fun and a little bit smaller. So with a nice quarter inch seam allowance, I'm just going to trim off the excess here. I'm going to fold this over. And in this one, I'm technically pressing up into the add on fabric or the blue fabric because the next piece here, as I lay this on, I need to make sure that my lines are going to run perpendicular into each other or come up and form this point. So here's that diagonal this way. I'm going to come over here and sew this on now, but I had to press that other edge over to make everything work as nicely and as accurately as possible so that I could sew right down this drawn line again, get on up to the top. And again, setting those aside for later use, they're big enough and I have enough of them that it actually makes sense to save them. I'm going to press this right back over. And this is now building up the outside edge piece. So we're going to make three more of those for a total of four, and then we'll assemble the rest of this block. Super easy. And as we're finishing pressing over, the fourth of these rectangles here. You might as well just keep two in your hand. There's really no wrong or right answer to this. We're going to grab those last four of the black squares and we're just going to sew those on just like we did in the step before with the smaller pieces. We're just going to build up the outside snowball, excuse me, cornerstone blocks. Now this time we're going to press the seam from the block into the cornerstone, or I should say the cornerstone block into the uh, large piece just to help prep that out. So I'm just kind of rotating, holding it up, flipping it over there a little bit. And again, that just helps some of that bulk seam management if you're new to quilting as more and more pieces come together. As we get ready to put our star center back in, just make sure that your little black V's are pointing away from the center like this. Sew on your short sides first. We're 
We're gonna take a moment to press these and now we're gonna press these away from the center. And that's why we are pressing the other ones in towards the center technically. It's all these little things that just kind of help with the accuracy and really help with some of the machine quilting as well. The other nice thing is you'll have more stitch points now to line up and seam allowances to line up the unions of, making sure you keep everything nice and accurate that way. Lining that up, lining up the center here now, taking a moment to make sure that these points match up down here. All right, well, one last press and it's time to show off our work here. And there it is, looking awesome, terrific. Oh, it looks fantastic over there, doesn't it? That's really cool. Now, as a reminder, whether you're using the AccuCut, or excuse me, AccuQuilt cutting system, or you're doing the patchwork off of the PDFs that you're printing out for free off of the michaelmiller.com, over at their Making It Fun blog. Did you see the information I just gave you there? Either way, the blocks all line up, which is super cool. So you can start with one method, start uh, finish with the other. That's awesome. Mike, my friend here, wants to point out how much he loves our fabulous batiks at Michael Miller Fabrics. So that's why we started this whole thing to share our batiks across the year. I'm using the basics because I love working with the basics. And I really want to remind all of you to support your local quilt shop. And I use a lot of basics here at Making It Fun because you can always find the basics, hopefully Michael Miller basics, in your local quilt shop. They are out there. They are there to serve you. We are all enjoying this creative time we are all spending together. I will thank you for watching today's video and we will see you in the next one. I'm glad to see you're still there. Hey, if you insist on spending all day on YouTube, great with me. Please check out a few of my other videos. I think they're fantastic. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified. We'll see you next time for another helping of fun.